and that is violence in gaming. It's been an on-off hot topic for media for decades, almost decade. since the dawn of the gaming industry, but uh, last month's tragic shootings in Sandy Hook has once again brought a lot of this attention toward video games and their effect on youth, people, and society in general back into the mainstream attention. Now, before we dig into this largely sensitive, heavy topic here, I want to get the elephant out of the room to clarify that we hold no disrespect to the events that happen in Connecticut or anywhere else. Um, we won't be discussing much of this particular case because the media has done a fine job dragging it through the mud and emptying its pockets as always anyway. Um, the debate against guns is a valid one that needs to be discussed, and but that's not really what we're talking about here. And more importantly, maybe something will actually be done about our society's destructive nature toward each other and the mental disorders that we're creating out of it through bullying and just how we have so much hate while at the same time preaching tolerance. Just ridiculously hypocritive. hypocritive. But I highly sincerely doubt that most of these arguments that I've heard about and related to topics on and off the internet these days, I, I seriously doubt that anything's actually going to come of it. It's going to be another open and shut case as soon as it's out of the public's attention. The next big story comes along. But our discussion is largely on the, uh, uh, well, solely on the debate and controversies around violence in video games and the behavior caused because of video games. Plus, despite this whole sensitive topic here, we also want to keep things a bit lighthearted, as angry rants and finger pointing is usually best left to the professionals who make a living doing little else. That's right. <laughs> Hi, politicians and lawyers. <laughs> so, yeah, there's been a lot of shootings over the years. Sandy Hook, Columbine, the Aurora Batman shootings. I heard that there was a shooting just this morning in Aurora, Colorado again. It's not video game related, but there's just shootings all the time. And a lot of them get tied back to video games because the people that are involved in these things are video game players. Now, some of this makes really stupid sense considering how many surveys are proving how many people are video game players these days. So just because somebody's playing a video game is really weird just to point at, oh, they were playing video games, they must have had an effect on this person. That should be a person-to-person -person situation and not a general... They're going around saying that these millions of gamers are all potential threats because they play video games is one of the most laughable things that a person can say today, and they're saying it with a straight face. I'm almost scared to say it because I don't know, you know, one side of like, yeah, he does, and the other side of like, oh my god, he's a devil. Uh, our president has openly said that he plays video games video games sometimes. Oh no! But he probably doesn't play the violent video games. And that's mostly what I think they're they're targeting. Oh yeah, the, the violent ones. And sometimes the, what they do find is violence kind of vague. Yeah, it's like, what is your definition of a violent video game? <laughs> And a lot of the times, you know they're not exactly getting their information straight. Um, we've had a lot of politicians that have been really vocal about this stuff, like Joe Lieberman and Hillary Clinton and Leland Yee are probably the biggest of them. And you can't mention violence in video games and not mention the notorious Jack Thompson at some point. But a lot of the times when they're quoting something, like there was a case involving uh, Grand Theft Auto about players being rewarded for beating down, stomping down, and then repeatedly shooting an innocent bystander. I'm kind of scratching my head to think of, how is the gamer rewarded for this? You don't get any reward for that from my note. You might, they might get a couple of bucks in cash because of the system represented as, you know, some people carry money on them, and yes, you can get money by killing bystanders. Yeah, you can get money by killing so, bystanders. I'm not going to defend the game there. I mean, you can do that stuff, but as far as what they're making it sound like, like you're getting bonus points for doing extra horrible things... No. No, not at all. And in fact, when you do stuff like that, the police usually go after you. <laughs> so it's just like there is punishment for doing crazy stuff like that in the game. Although some people p purposely do that in the game to go on a rampage, but you know that's it's, it's that's what the game's for, and that just it's a game for adults. Kids shouldn't be playing it. Mm -hmm. uh, video games have long been protected by the First Amendment, if I'm not mistaken, which mm -hmm. is the freedom of speech. But there are you know certain limitations to that freedom like you can't scream fire in a crowded movie theater that's that's illegal you can't say bomb on an airplane so there's there's limitations to it and i don't think these cases are going to go anywhere but maybe they might try to push for some similar limitations well it is kind of how the asrb was started in the first place is the government mm -hmm. basically demanded the, the gaming industry to start policing themselves or the government would do it for them and this was largely because of uh, mortal Kombat and night trap back in the day, which is really hilarious because Night Trap was pretty much an unknown release for the Sega CD that nobody cared about. And because of the whole controversy, sold better. These things always backfire. Uh, you but, don't, don't let your kids play this. Hundreds of thousands of kids play it. <laughs> pretty much. They are ratings. You can't go to places like GameStop as a kid 
Well, I'll speak my GameStop locally. I have seen them refuse to sell people video games based on rating to kids. I mean, while, while I've been in there picking up other things, you know, random kid will walk up there with an M-rated game, and they'll be like, "Is your parent around here? Because you can't buy this by yourself." Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's it's not like games are ending up into the hands of children because that's where they belong. It's not like that at all. Games are made for adults just as much as they're made for little kids. Mm-hmm. These kids get hold of it. It's because their parents gave it to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, they can they can rate these games as whatever they want, and as long as the parents can you know buy the game for them, which that's their right. They're an adult. Our I don't even know if it's, it's gonna get, uh, kids are going to get their hands on violent games. And I think you pretty much hit the nail on the head there. A lot of this is less about the video games and more about the upbringing of our children in America. Mm-hmm. Responsibility. There's but, oh, so, I forgot. So We're a society that likes to finger point. Yeah, we love the finger point, that's for sure. It's a really hard tell. thing because we'll keep going toward things that make people uneasy and even make us uneasy when we're talking about it. Now, all this is not to say that I don't think games should know limits because there's a lot of game makers out there that really try to push how far they can take something. Yeah, and they're not making things easy easier on the rest of the people that just want to make a fun game. Mm-hmm. I think a very good example of this, and this is the second time that Dead Space has been involved in this. The first time was with the campaign, with the showing the mothers the game footage and making fun of their reactions about how violent and vile a lot of the scenes from those games are. Yeah. And now they're talking about a Kinect version that will actually reward you for using certain curse words at certain time periods. Now, there's supposed to be little hidden things, but you can just imagine how parents, kids, and the media are going to take something like oh this. Oh my god. And how commonplace it could become if it's popular. Encouraging people to cuss. We don't well, need that help. We've already got Xbox Live. Yeah, and years ago, I'm older than my little sister, and I would go to her elementary school and pick her up. And I was in high school at the time, and those kids were saying things that I hadn't even heard. <laughs> so Yeah, it's, it's not, oh my, crazy. Yeah, I don't think cussing in video games is it as huge of a deal because it's so rampant anymore that it just doesn't matter. But see, that's the thing. It's the desensitizing that comes with anything like that. Uh, the more you yeah. are around it, the more you get used to it. And violence is the same way. When you watch a bunch of violent movies, when you play a bunch of violent games, you are more desensitized about it. The psychologists are right about that. They do have effect on people, but they don't program killers any more than books or movies or anything else of that nature. As a matter of fact, it is easier to get really deplorable depictions of stuff with without pictures, mind you, in books. And they are not rated whatsoever. Yep. And as it's been stated many times before, we've had mass murderers and we've had killers of all sorts before there were guns, before there were video before, games. Before this is there was anything. This is a part of a social issue that has never been dealt with. And of I course, mean, mankind in general is always going uh, to be I mean, violent. Violent stuff is always going to happen. I mean, that that's just a fact of life. Somebody is going to flip out for one reason or another and decide, hey, it's time to kill people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, but the thing with the school is, and I hate to go into it, it's mostly uh, the school systems and bullying everything in the United States. And I don't want to point to other countries because most other countries usually don't have the craziness that's going on here. There's a lot of stress in schools, period. So when yeah. you start adding in the, the whole peer pressure things, there's a lot of uh, sexism in school. There's a lot of pressures about uh, drugs and sex and alcohol. and There is a lot of things going on with youth, and video games are often one of those things that takes them away from all of that. But when it's, when it's a violent video game, people take more notice about it because A, it's something that's supposed to be outside of their age range and they're playing it anyway, and B, that the violence has always been considered something that's kind of cool in this country. Uh, yeah, like die hard, die hard videos and stuff. Violence was more easily let into the mainstream than a lot of sexual and uh, cursing kind of content, which is really strange, because I'll even point this out. I, I know it's not exactly related, but out of all of the games released in the world, a lot of them get banned for violence in various countries. A lot of them get banned for other reasons. There is only one game that has ever been even semi-banned in the United States, and that was the game The Game Guy. 
of course, I have no real problems with people banning this game. It was horrible to begin with, uh, which was basically one part trivia game and one part Girls Gone Wild with a few extra mini games and stuff. And it was banned wow. after a courtroom tussle because one of the girls revealed that she was underage at the time of the shooting. And uh, she sued, which I'm kind of scratching my head here, and the judge prevented Sony and Microsoft from further distribution of the game on their systems. However, there was no order for any kind of recall. The devs still sold footage from the game on a DVD on their website, and Microsoft even later made the backwards compatibility update for the guy game for the 360 several months or even years later, I rather. I just gotta scratch my head sometimes. That's... <laughs> What the hell? The only banned game in history, and it was because of a 17-year-old who got paid to show her breasts. And I can only guess because she lied about her age, or they didn't ask. Yeah, I, I know one thing is these kids this day and age, a lot of people are just like, especially from my people my age, they're just, I've heard people say horrible things about the kids, and you know, our, the generation, you know, my parents stuff, they probably said the same thing about us, but uh, they have some things that I never had to deal with as a kid. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, yeah, I got bullied, I'm not going to lie, I got bullied when I was in school. So, you know, I'm totally against bullying. But these kids can bully at a new level. I oh, yeah. mean, uh, before I know, if, when I got home, I was good. It's no longer the case, especially if they go online. They can come at them 24-7. Social media, cell phones. Mm -hmm. It's changed a lot about the way people interact with each other. So that constant pressure follows them everywhere, especially when the parents aren't helping as much as they used to. Now, don't get me wrong, I understand the point of both parents having to work these days because it takes two people working to even survive as a couple, let alone if you've got kids these days. Yeah, it's insanity. So not being there for your kids is something I can kind of understand a little more, but at the same time, there has to be a point where you have to make a decision of which is more important, this fancy new car or the future of your children. And you at least need to start taking more time, set aside, be a part of your kids' lives, and not just buy them things to make do or to apologize for the time missed. And I know there's yeah. plenty of Hallmark specials and stuff that go over this kind of thing, but it's a serious problem. Well, I know a lot of people use a school as a, uh, as a daycare center for their kids, basically. They, they mm -hmm. rarely interact with them. And it's using video games and movies and stuff as a babysitter as well. That's not a good thing. And, uh... It, it just, there's so much to say. We should have wrote some stuff down. <laughs> yeah. This is that kind of topic. Well, the interesting thing is, since we're going about the schools and games, I don't know, uh, one of the major issues I see is the zero tolerance stuff. I call it zero intelligence. <laughs> I've talked to it about it in my Let's Plays. It's the laziest form of trying to moderate something, mm -hmm. and for especially for schools. And, you know, being lazy for that. Everything in schools should be by a situation-by-situation situation basis. You shouldn't say, oh, well, uh, this guy went on a murderous rant page this child did so anybody that does anything that is remotely similar to that will be punished even if they you know uh, that kid looked kind of moody well we need to start giving him detention until he stops that or just that kind of stuff and i think that's actually very close to one of the problems that we're having with a lot of these situations of people in these shootings is that a lot of these people are troubled people not just psychologically but because of the stuff that was happening to them and there was nobody there to help them now a lot of cases people are not really open to talk about their problems which is it's really strange considering we're in this age where everybody loves to shout at the loudest voice everything in their opinions. Facebook. But, <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of people out there that are very quiet. I'm a very quiet person. I don't generally just talk about what's going on in my life. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think I've lost a lot of friends because I've not been more public about myself, which just sounds really strange the way I bully myself around on this show, <laughs> taking over conversations right and left. But, oh, we love it. It gives us something to talk about, us introverts. But it's true. It, there's not a lot of focus on what makes these people snap the way they are, and they're trying to find these blame triggers, and that's all well and good, but why not try to do more to help these people before they become this? And, and yeah, from, from personal experience, I mean, I, I think you probably know a little, Chris, from uh, I was having issues at, too, and uh, that's one thing is, you know, why do you keep quiet? And honestly, I kept quiet because it, it's almost like uh, you're ashamed. You're ashamed mm -hmm. of what was wrong with you, and you don't want other people to know until it's such a situation that you can no longer hide it. Well, nine times out of ten, it's socially unaccepted. You're mm -hmm. kind of outcast 
for even seeking help for this type of stuff. And there's a lot of things in society that are this way. People are sooner to hate certain aspects of society than bothering to sit down and say, okay, why are you this way? What can we do to help you get out of it? Yeah, well, what really terrified me was when they said that they were going to considering a national mental illness registry, mm-hmm. where if you had any form of mental illness, you were added to this list and that you'd be barred from things. And I was like, you know, that's terrifying. Oh, yeah. That's Because that's like that zero tolerance thing. They're making this line and everybody's either on one side or the other. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to decide for you what you are and aren't capable of. And you got to love how the, the medical industry just takes over with all those drugs, pumping them into mm-hmm. people, and I can't help but feel they're not part of the problem. I, I think don't feel like they're... I think most of our listeners are probably old enough to remember the whole Ritalin thing of the 90s. Ritalin! And uh, oh, whole ADHD. Happy. And your kid's happy and smiles and jumps around and behaves like a normal kid. We need to dope them up until they're drooling on the floor. Mm-hmm. And I think our antidepressants are the new Ritalin. Mm-hmm. There is probably a good two out of five people in the United States on antidepressants. It may be higher than that. I'm just throwing a number out there from what it seems to be the case. Technically, I'm on an antidepressant. <sighs> they want me to be on one, but I've seen it what it's done to people, and I don't like that. I'd rather kind of suffer <laughs> than have myself turned into a half zombie. They did that to me. I had to get a good person, you know, that didn't want to drug me to stupidity to give me the proper thing I needed. Most of them are just like, give this until they quit complaining. Pretty much. Nobody's Which- really interested in curing or helping people it's more of uh, the quick fix and that's exactly what this whole video game stuff is about is the quick fix and it really goes by state by state too unfortunately some states have really good better health systems for this while other ones <laughs> Illinois has uh, <laughs> absolutely horrible versions but I think we're going way off topic when we're going for games <laughs> That is true. I, I did it a little bit ago, so that's okay. So here's something to put us back on topic a little bit. Uh, this made news around the rounds a little bit. Don't react too quickly, because it makes more sense than it actually sounds. Southington, Connecticut is seeking to collect and destroy violent video games. So they've got this program that is offering people a $25 gift exchange card thing to, uh, for people's video games. So according to this group, the games will be snapped and tossed into a town dumpster and then later incinerated. Uh, violent movies and music will also be accepted. Now, now, this sounds like one of those type of things where it sounds like a book burning, but a witch burn. before people panic about what the heck are they doing, I do like what this fellow here says. Now, he probably does not speak for everybody, but if this is truly how people are reacting to things, this is a good sign. The Southington School Superintendent Joe Arardi told Polygon, there are youngsters who appear to be consumed with violent video games. I'm not certain if it's a good thing. If this encourages one courageous conversation with a parent and their child, then it's a success. We're suggesting that for parents who have a child or children who play violent video games to first of all view the games. We're asking parents to better understand what their child is doing and to have a conversation about it as their next steps. If the parents are comfortable with their child's gaming habits, then we're comfortable. That is an awesome attitude. Mm -hmm. Parents, get involved with what your kids are doing. If you feel comfortable that your kids are doing well, that they're mentally stable to handle the stuff, that it's not affecting them ill, then it's up to that parent to say that, yeah, we're cool with them playing these games. It's not bothering them. They're not learning any bad habits from them. Then it's not the government or anybody else's place to say, we need to stop this. Yeah, that's like, I completely agree with that. I know some kids that I think are mature enough and logical enough that they actually play some games and they play some violent games and they're just like well you know it's been a hard day at school so i just go and uh shoot myself some zombies or they go play uh you know one of the shooting games or like team fortress 2 ultra violent games yeah my parents are pretty conservative people uh they're very highly christian and they've never really been against a lot of the type of games that i've played they've shown their distaste for certain games but even as far back as I can remember, I don't remember any particular game they felt so uncomfortable about me personally playing that they said, this isn't good for you, because I never reacted that way toward any particular game. This is aside from a very common thing that has come to be known as rage quit in a lot of circles, but there is gamer rage. That does exist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is psychologically proven. Now, this is, happens with anything, honestly, but it seems to be more notable with uh, games because of how tense certain situations can get. And uh, especially the ones where people are interacting with each other, and even worse, when hackers are involved, that um, when gamers get to a certain stress point, they burst. Now, whether this means a massive flying of expletives, or throwing the controller against the wall, or 
angrily shutting off their system or going to a forums board and cussing out the game makers and or the people they were playing along with, <laughs> whatever the case may be, this does exist, and it is part of the proof that video games do affect people. There is no way to say that video, playing video games is not going to affect my life. They I do. mean, go to, go to my Let's Play. I can count three times I've raged. <laughs> I was pissed. Now, I didn't super rage where, you know, you hear me cussing and screaming and throwing shit at the wall, but you could tell in the video that I was very angry, but I was containing myself. Well, you knew other people were listening. Yeah, you know, you're, you know, it's like something really horrible just happened and you're furious, but you're in a crowd of people, so you're just sitting there, steam coming out of your ears, that kind of thing. I'm getting a lot better at it, though, and I think everybody should, they should just, when that happens... My rule is if I rage, stop what you're doing immediately. Because mm-hmm. that's just, you need you need to chill out for a second. I broke a controller once. <laughs> I bit a controller. <laughs> I threw it so hard against the ground at my feet that it bounced and broke. One of my cousins broke my Super Scope 6 in rage. That was a sad day. That's a pretty long piece of plastic with glass on both ends, so I could see why that would yeah. be pretty easy to get snapped. It was also $190. Ooh, that was yeah. early on, then. Yeah, it was very early on. I got it, and they broke it, and I never got another one. My parents were like, well, that system's broken. So much for that. But yeah, raging, raging, especially in some kids. Like like I said, all, all, most of the stuff I for real rage I did as a kid, I did break one of my controllers, and I also got grounded from the video game system for, uh, I think, a month when I did that. My mom saw me do that, and she's like, oh, good, you uh, you broke that controller that I bought for you, so I'm just going to take all of it away from you for the next month, and you can think about that. And I never did that again. <laughs> My video games, they ran away. I didn't mean what I said. Yeah, I didn't mean to throw that controller. This is getting very complicated. <laughs> what are you doing? No, I mean, we're just, just, just a conversation. We're, we're just, uh, it is. Next, next thing we're running. What are we doing now? <laughs> well, I have a list of games that caused a lot of controversy. So yes, we, we'll we could kind that. of just snap over some. We already talked about Night Trap. So there was Doom, which was a huge thing in the early 90s, largely because it was one of the first uh, online shooters. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people were playing with each other. And uh, because of the aspects that uh, there was demons, there was hell, there was a lot of violence, there was a lot of shooting other people. It was one of the early, look at this evil game that's doing to our, our, our children. And then we had stuff like Mortal Kombat, which of course closely tied the, the uh, ESRB, I say it right, eventually. I remember my parents would not let me play Mortal Kombat. I think that is largely where a lot of people started paying more attention to what their kids were playing. They didn't mind Doom, but Mortal Kombat, I guess uh, my older cousin, he was 18 plus at that time, showed them the stuff that you can do, since it was a controversy, and they're like, hey, you own this, show us what you could do in this game and they showed him they're like oh hell no oh hell no you, there's no way you're playing this you're you're like nine years old <laughs> yeah duke nukem 3d had some of those situations too because it merged the two together but it was kind of hilarious was the duke nukem yeah but it was hilarious to adults yeah uh i, I kind of wonder how many kids learned about tipping strippers because of that game for example <laughs> the- <Yeah. laughs> I just know when I was 13, my parents let me uh, play Mortal Kombat. In fact, I got Mortal Kombat when I was 13 as, I think, a Christmas, a Christmas present. Because I kept asking and begging and stuff all the time. <laughs> and then from there, it was like, you know, within months, I had Mortal Kombat 2 and 3. So it's just so long ago. It's just like, wow. <laughs> And then there's some other ones that are just aren't really mentioned that I, my parents considered violent games just by uh, some of the stuff that happened. Like, I remember one game when I killed people, they screamed. I can't remember which game that was. Oh, man, I wish I remembered. Hmm. It was an NES game. And then you got, like, Mech Warrior. Mech Warrior was considered. My, my parents were always like, that game's pretty violent. I can't think of anything too odd about that one, actually. Since they're all in machines when they're dying, it doesn't seem to seem as violent. Yeah. My, my parents were weird on that. They were just like, this game is an experience explosion fest and you're killing people and you're getting killed this is this is horrible then there's grand theft auto oh of course grand theft auto it, it's usually the go-to series for any of these controversies oddly enough san andreas got more uh publicity and controversy over this stupid hot coffee thing hot coffee. <laughs> which for the few people who don't know about that one was basically there was supposed to be a sex mini game in the original but it was taken out but a lot of the attributes were still in the game so uh when hackers got a hold of it they found it and released patches for it. And the ASRB said, you hid this from us, but we didn't put it in the game, but it's in the code. So there was a lot of controversy there, but by and large, mostly it was the, the violence and the, um, the violence. 
Yeah, the violence. And as if Rockstar was saying, oh, you think that was violent? Then they went and made the Manhunt series. Oh, yeah. That's crazy violent. And to basically explain the plot, think of something along the lines of where you've got a bunch of murderers and killers and horrible, horrible people in this big sealed off area kind of Arkham City style and the whole point is for this dude to survive and kill as many people along the way as possible without getting killed himself now there's a lot of games that do something very similar to this but this was a very violent very graphic game where you used anything at your disposal to do so and the camera would try to get the best angle when you killed something now a lot of times there was uh, censored versions I think of this game that would have like black bars and stuff and some of them would have filters that would kind of obscure what was happening but then the majority of the games were very gruesome Boy, for what they did yeah and <laughs> that is one of those series that yes they did go too far by anybody's standards i mean just, if where they were they were trying to push the envelope mm-hmm. they were trying they to get so very well attention. and it's yeah it sold well because of that it's a shame <laughs> And Bully actually got in trouble simply because uh, politicians, I think Jack Thompson specifically, uh, found out that Grand Theft Auto creators were making a game about a kid in school. And just that premise alone, they went berserk over. Yeah, Bully was awesome. Bully is a very cool game. I haven't played the whole thing of it, but it was actually fairly entertaining, and I didn't see that much really out of context yeah, for it. it I remember people, crazy. people also went crazy that you could have a gay relationship in it, too. <laughs> That's kind of become the norm in the last seven years in video games. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime they give you a choice between characters, there seems to always they throw in uh, uh, an extra male or an extra female, as the case may be, simply for those that want to pursue that. Fable. Yep. Fable. Mass Effect. Sims 2, Sims 3, yep. Sims 1. And, yeah. <laughs> and of course, all those dating Sims from the Japanese that we've mentioned before. Yeah, those crazy games. <laughs> Thankfully, we haven't gotten to that point yet. Uh, there was a uh, Japanese game that did actually come out over here in very limited volumes. <laughs> called uh, Rayplay. Oh, God. You can judge by the title where that game goes and why it's not considered highly by a lot of political people. Thankfully, a lot of our political people aren't even familiar with it. I'm not even sure if I even want to play that game. I have no interest in it. I find I nothing e- erotic about rape. I'm sorry. I'm, I don't even and want to play And I know there's it. a lot of people to do. And, there's you know, crazy-ass people. <laughs> whatever they want to role play in their bedroom is their own thing, but I don't think a rape simulator is the way to exactly go about being classy about their video games. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's kind of like the, uh, the, GF, the JFK Reloaded uh, yeah, game. It's exactly that sort of thing. You know? It's built yeah. for shop. I mean, it was a JFK Reloader thing. I see what they were trying to do, trying to see if you can completely recreate what's happening. And I do get to admit, I, I actually got interested and I sat there for a while and tried to recreate it and I couldn't because I suck at FPS. But other than that, it was just, you know, shocker too. It just that, you know, extremely bad taste. There seems to be plenty of people in the gaming industry with very little good taste, yes. Yeah, they, they don't care. They just, they're just like, oh, you know, <laughs> how can we shock people? It's, it's just like everybody's gone the family guy away. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes when it's really crazy, over the top, which is two other games that got in trouble about their violence, like uh, Mad World and Bulletstorm. When they go over the top with their violence, there gets to be this point where it's almost cartoon-like. Yeah, I remember there was a game uh, that Rockstar made that was purposely made to go over the top. It was just absurd. It was where you were in a mall or a city and there was a riot going on. Uh, State of Emergency, yeah. State of Emergency, yeah, yeah. That was a purposely over the top, and I just remember that game was crazy violent, but in the most comical way possible. Yeah, is the only reason it got in trouble at all, oddly enough, is because there was apparently a similarity toward a Seattle riot that was yeah. happening that happened about the same time as the game was released. It was uh, nothing in that game was serious. It was just basically a random character with no name. Hey, go do this, go do that. Fight the police or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that consisted of the entire game. In fact, you could push forward and hold down the attack button and basically do whatever you want in that game. Unless you were doing the whole uh, escort missions. Oh yeah, those were the hard oh. missions. <laughs> Some of the hardest escort missions I've ever played this side of Wing Commander. I think I played that game, but I can't remember it. Because like, I know you owned it, didn't you? Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure I... games that didn't get stolen. <laughs> yeah. Did I, did I play it at your house? Possibly. I don't remember getting very far, though, if I did. It was it's, very... It's a long game. It was a very unrememberable game. There was a sequel. Never played there it. There was? Yeah. Nobody had said, oh, we're making this game. It just kind of released. There it was. Okay. <laughs> I had no clue. There is one game I definitely have to mention. Now, Call of Duty has had chock full of violent moments. It's one of the go-to games for online players everywhere, and it's often one of the main points for gaming violence, too. It does reward people for killing other people. Yes. There is one particular sequence.
sequence. And Call of Duty was pretty famous about doing these sequences that caught people's attention, that gripped people. And probably one of the biggest gaming moments in history was uh, Modern Warfare 1's uh, surviving the nuke thing that just came out of nowhere that changed a lot of gaming for a lot of people. Oh, and I remember I that. I think this was supposed to be one of those kind of moments, and boy, did it get attention for it. Modern Warfare I... 2 Airport Massacre, where you were an undercover agent working alongside of a bunch of uh, Russian terrorists who were to basically frame the United States for something really, really bad in Russia by mowing down an entire airport full of people. Now, you have the choice of joining them or not. It, it's irrelevant to the actual gameplay because the story carries out regardless. So there's no reward for doing it. There's no, other, And it's meant to grip you. It's meant to grab a hold of you and say, this kind of crap could happen. It was not meant to be sensational. It was not meant to be one of those sensational moments. It was meant to grab people's attention and get them in the chest. And it worked for a lot of people. But, you know, the second time through, it's not so bad anymore. And it kind of proves the whole desensitization thing that you get used to it. The way I put it is literally watching a nuclear bomb video. The first time you watch one, it was in uh, grade school. And seeing a nuclear bomb go off, because we saw an IMAX at the same with Science Center, Mm. Uh, it was both the most amazing thing I ever saw and utterly terrifying. Now, I remember later on seeing him and it's just like, yep, nuclear bomb. Desensitation, you adapt to it. You're used to it and you're just like, yeah, that's happening. So, all in all, I think we all are pretty much in agreement that there's not so much need for, like, banning games by any means. And I think that's also a common misconception among gamers that politicians are out to ban games for everybody. They're probably out to police games from getting into the hands of certain age groups, which I'm actually behind. I am completely behind that. The parents should decide how they want to raise their kids, but they also need to be taking responsibility for how they raise their kids. And likewise, politicians should take more responsibility for the things they do and not get raises while everybody's getting their taxes raised this year. Yay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that. Thank you, Congress. There was one thing that I wanted to mention which was uh, Penny Arcade's recent comic strip referring to the NRA statement about it being violent video games instead of guns. I'll just quote it. It's a very odd sort of patriot that would throw the First Amendment under the bus in order to protect the second. Yes. And I, I love that quote mm-hmm. because it's so true. You can't be patriotic about one thing and not the other. You have to. It's an all or nothing deal. Either the whole thing applies or none of it applies. It's not one of those, oh, we get to pick and choose which parts of the uh, Constitution we enjoy. You know, oh, this part's not serving us very well right now. Let's throw that one under the bus. You can't really do that. Yeah, the NRA are crazy for making that statement. Yeah. Yeah, even Leland Yee, who's very famous for his stances against uh, video games, he was the one that was trying to ban uh, all mature games out of game stores entirely. He was one of the more uh, extremists on that nature. And even he even called him out. So if he's calling him out, then yeah. Yeah, when I think extremists the NRA are just like, whoa. <laughs> I also think publishers and developers need to be a little bit more careful about their marketing. Uh, the the crap, specifically EA, has been pulling isn't going to fly anymore. <laughs> it's causing more harm than it is good. I mean, sure, you know, your commercial is somewhat funny the first time, but then, you know, you realize it's all about saying, hey, this mature-rated game that you probably shouldn't let your kid play, oh, they're, your parents are just going to hate this. You should go and play this because it's what your parents don't want. Mm-hmm. Oh, Sega used to do that, too, back in the day, too, in the magazine. Magazines said this game is like masturbation. You'll love it. I was just and yeah, I was just like I remember that that ad clearly. <laughs> One because these my parents were, saw it and had a fit. <laughs> these were magazines. They were often known to be in the possession of kids, so it's not like they were in like People Magazine or something like that. Now you got to note that uh, they actually. My mom, you know, used to be crazy on that stuff, and she actually wrote letters to people, and she actually got a response apology for uh, that magazine because <laughs> I think I was ten when I got that magazine. I know, I know my parents were like, damn, right now we have to explain the facts of life and stuff and all that horrible stuff or whatever. But yeah, they actually sent her an apology. I think advertisement is largely where a lot of the game developers are making some of their bigger missteps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We were just talking about the, the Hitman thing with Facebook not too long. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I imagine if this whole controversy had happened before that, they would not have bothered to run that. Or with the uh, Medal of Honor that was had on the website where you could go look at the actual guns that were used in the game at the stores where the guns were actually sold. Oh, that was also kind of a controversy thing, too. Much less so, in my opinion, but still. Having websites leading to, oh, by the way, you can buy this here. Do you like using this Uzi? Well, you can buy it here. <laughs> 
But we're near our mark here, so I think we're... I know that's kind of jarring and where we're just stopping here, but this is one of those conversations that can really go on and on and on, and we've skipped and skimmed so much as it is. But, uh, yeah, I think we're pretty much all on the same page. The video games is not the problem. It is not the answer. It is just a symptom of our society, and we need to fix society before we can start pointing fingers at the symptoms. Exactly. Agreed. So, that's our show for this week. Join us every Monday for the next Printing Cash. We will be back to our weekly schedule again. Um, you can catch us on Twitter at PrintyCast, and our email is printycast at gmail.com. If you have any thoughts, suggestions, comments, or ideas, uh, we'll see you all guys next time. Goodbye. See you next time. So you what this what? does Bottom is it, it forces parents to be parents. Hello, moms and yeah. dads. Well, it's your job.